Recently, I had the honor of sitting down for a long talk with one of America's favorite talk show hosts and most trusted sources of advice, Dr. Phil McGraw. Now, one subject we got into was raising kids with so many factors in society, pulling families apart and trying to take over the role of parents. I knew that was a subject that would be front and center in 2024. So as part of our special New Year's show, here's some more of my conversation not yet seen with Dr. Phil McGraw. Dr. Phil, great to see you and have you Glad here. Glad to be here. <clears throat> you have been doing daytime television, my goodness, for... 20 21 some, seasons. 21 well, seasons. Well, I did five on Oprah and then 21 on my own. So, so that's, a, that's a whole lot of daytime television. It is. Is there something in the future that... I mean, can we be maybe expecting, I know you're not ready to make a big announcement right now, but might we see you in prime time sometime in the near future? You're going to see me in prime time in January of 24. And I'm not giving a lot of details about where and, and all, the, all of the specifics about that right now, but I can tell you that um, we're... we're going to be on the air in January of 24. Very excited about it. Building out the studios now, working with my staff now, putting it all together. And it, I am more excited about what I'm doing starting in January of 24 than I was back in 2002 mm -hmm. when I launched Dr. Phil to begin with, because the, I, I, I just feel like America right now is hungry for a healthy dialogue, a constructive dialogue. And, you know, the, America's still going to get their dose of Dr. Phil because I'm still going to have guests on the show. Yeah. I'm still going to be talking about the challenges that individuals are facing, families are facing. Uh, but we're also going to talk about what's happening in society and, and, and what society's facing. And, you know, I've talked about parents enabling kids, but what's the impact of them doing that? You know, how is that impacting our society? You know, when, when you do things for children, when you become concierge parents, when you smooth out all the bumps for them, when you don't take care of your business and let them learn by doing, you're cheating these kids out of a really important life lesson. And most importantly, you're cheating them out of a chance to observe themselves overcoming obstacles Hmm. So they learn, hey, I can do that. Hmm. I overcame that. I have that confidence now. And we've got parents and universities that are coddling these young people and cheating them out of the opportunity to learn that they're competent and capable and able to do what they need to do. And I think a lot of people are frustrated. The whole idea that a kid would go to a university campus and have to have a safe space so he could get a popsicle, hug a puppy, and use some Play-Doh for a while. This is a college kid. What's wrong with him? He well, ought to be able I to cut that out. I bring him into my safe. <laughs> uh, I do, too. Yeah, let me tell you something. This, there was a time, I, I've, I've been around a long time, um, and there was a time when I would have two applicants in front of me that were matched in every way, same IQ, same personality, same history in many respects, job-wise, and one of them had a college degree and the other did not. And if I knew nothing except that, I would hire the college-educated one, even if their degree was in something irrelevant to the job. Mm -hmm. Why? Because what I knew about that college graduate was they had the ability to set a long-term goal, they had the ability to get along with jerk professors, <laughs> and they had the ability to, to get projects in on time, to work with others. I, I knew they had the ability to work in a four-year window, meet deadlines, get along with people, et cetera, et cetera. And I didn't know that about this other person. Maybe they could too, but I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I knew that about this person because I knew what the college experience brought. I don't know that anymore. Mm. I don't know mm. that anymore. There have been more college professors Discipline suspended or fired in the last several years than we've seen since the McCarthy era, hmm. uh, back when Joseph McCarthy was accusing people of being communists. We've had them fired because students have complained about them saying things that hurt their feelings. 
hurt their feelings. And yes. tenured professors have been dismissed because some students said, well, he said something hurt, hurt my feelings. She said something hurt my feelings. Really? <laughs> <laughs> really said something that I disagreed with. Isn't that what college is supposed to do? They're shouting down speakers. Yeah. They're shouting down speakers. So I used to know that someone had been through a, 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 a different ideas and challenged to think outside their own bubble. Now I don't know that anymore. And that's sad. It I don't is know very that anymore. sad. And, and you see it in the parents, uh, parent of a seven-year-old. Kid comes home and says, I know I was born a boy, but I think I want to be a girl. And instead of the parents saying, well, let's talk about that. And let's, let's just visit with some people about that. They say, oh my goodness, let's go buy you a dress and let's get you some hormone therapy. What are we doing to kids when we don't think they're old enough and mature enough to buy liquor, to smoke cigarettes, to join the military, to buy a car, to drive a car or to vote, but we think they can make a life altering decision that would involve physically changing their very bodies. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, one of the troubling things to me is that a lot of these school districts have policies where a counselor can talk to a child for six sessions without having to even inform the parent. Mm. And there were some school districts recently that were saying, we're seeing higher spikes in depression, anxiety, and loneliness in young people right now than since records have been kept about that. Now, this was before the pandemic, so you can't blame this on the pandemic. It goes back to 09 and 010 when we started seeing these spikes. And so in reaction to that, some school districts have been offered, we'll bring you more counselors. And some of those school districts, the parents have come together and voted and said, no, thank you. Hmm. No, thank you, because we have no idea what those counselors are going to be saying to our children, and we don't even know they're having those conversations. And frankly, we don't trust you to be having these social conversations with our children and not consulting us on it. We don't know if you're encouraging them uh, to question their gender. We don't know if you're just hearing them out, if you're telling them that they need to consider this a phase, if you need to, if they need to take this seriously, if they need to consult a physician, bring the parents into the conversation. We don't know what you're telling them, so no thanks. We'll figure this out mm -hmm. on our own. Now, it's gotten so bad yeah. that they don't trust counselors to be with their children. And that's why I say parents need to get involved. And let me say to parents, I, I, I admire teachers so greatly. They work so hard for so little. Uh, I don't know a single teacher that doesn't get in their own pocket to bring materials into the classroom. They're not the policy setters. They're just in there doing their jobs. And I encourage parents, if you're concerned about this, don't run up the stairs of the school like your hair's on fire, hysterically like, oh my God, you're conspiring to destroy my child. Go in maturely and sit down with whoever is in charge of making these decisions and say, I want to know the policy. Hmm. I want to know what you're doing, how you're doing it, what your rules are about talking to my child, and I'm entitled to know that. And if they stonewall you, then you need to go to the school district. And if they stonewall you, then you know, need to go to the state. And if they stonewall you, then you need to get a lawyer because you're entitled to know every syllable of what that policy is. 100% on target. Thank you to Dr. Phil for spending his time with us. And if you're hoping for more Dr. Phil, you are in luck. He is launching a brand new show in 2024, and we have all the details. You want them? Yeah, of course you do. Go to Huckabee.tv for more information. Hey, Mike Huckabee here. Listen, if you love your mom, apple pie, and being conservative, you know you ought to subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell and click the like button and show all the leftists out there that conservatives are thriving and patriotism is far from dead. Am I pandering too much? No way, I'm just getting started.